Hello YouTube, this is Salam. In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn this Yes Welder MiG-205 DS Pro into an aluminum MiG Welder. You could apply the principles I'm going to provide in this video to any type of MiG Welder to turn it into an aluminum MiG Welder. If you are a beginner or you just have a few aluminum welding project and you want to use the MiG method, then the best option, in my opinion, to use a spool gun. The spool gun, you're not going to have any restriction issue. You don't have to modify your welder. I did review this spool gun, and I showed it in a few of my other videos. I will link to the review video at the end of this video. If you are interested, please watch it. Otherwise, if you just want to practice using your MIG welder to weld aluminum, then I will show you the complete process in this video. I hope you enjoy it. The MIG torch from the factory, it is designed to weld the steel. If we try to run aluminum wire through it, this may cause feeding issue because the aluminum wire is softer. It's also more malleable, so it will bend easy. We will try to keep the cable as straight as possible when we make aluminum using the MIG torch. First thing we have to do, we have to replace the liner, which is designed to weld the steel. The steel wire, this over here is solid MIG wire, and this flex core. They stiffer and stronger. So they will not have any feeding issue with the factory liner. Yes welder they supplied this graphene liner. It's made from a smoother material and this will help aid feeding the aluminum wire through it. So the first thing we have to do, we have to replace the liner inside this torch. I will start by removing the tip for two reasons. I have to make sure to use the right size tip for the size of wire I'm using. And I also, I want to make sure the new liner will make it all the way to the end of this MIG torch. At this end, this is the European style connector. If you use different type of MIG welder, then you may have different torch. You should look in the manual of your MIG welder on how to replace the liner of the MIG torch. However, this one is very simple. We just lose this nut over here. And we should be able to pull the liner. I will lay this torch straight on the ground and I show you how to pull this liner. Make sure to save this liner, don't alter it, don't damage it if you are planning to reuse it again to weld the steel. I will lay the new liner next to the original and make sure it's longer than the original. This brass looking spring, it's going to go at the torch end. It's about a 24 inch longer than the original one, so it's going to work. Like I said, I'll start with this uh, brass looking spring. Some liner, they come just made from this material. You don't have this. This is better quality liner. For MIG weld aluminum, because at the torch end, it's going to get hot. And this may damage the liner if it starts right at the tip. That's why they supply it like this. Alright, it's made it to the end. As you see, the new liner made it all the way to the end of the torch. I will take my new tip and I'll screw it to the end. This will ensure the new liner made it all the way to the end.
You should do this with the torch straight. However, I want to show you everything. Then you take this. This to help block the sinew liner in place. It's act as a collet if you're familiar with lathe or milling machine. And when we tie this knot, it will lock this liner in place. So we put this in. And then we slide this o-ring. This o-ring to help the shielding gas stay inside the liner or the torch and only deliver to the end of the torch and doesn't go back inside the welder. Don't over torque this retaining nut because this may damage the o-ring. This one right here. Make sure to snug it lightly like this. And this will keep the liner in place. Next, I will show you what you need to do inside the welder. To set the feeder to make weld aluminum, I'm going to remove this roller because it's for a flex core. And now I have to remove this metal tube. On my other Yes Welder MIG Welder, this tube is held by E-clip on both sides. On this one, they held it with the set screw. This little bit easier to do other than fighting that E-clip on the small tube. And you could lose that easy too. This Allen wrench is 2.5 millimeter, the closest thing I found to fit this uh, set screw. I need to push it further, so I'm going to use this piece of flex core wire. All right. And now remove it and make sure to save it in a safer place. So if you want to reverse this operation, you could put it back. This tube has to be as close as possible to the roller without touching it. That's why they shaper or they shape the end of it to be tapered like this. So the roller will get as close to it as possible. I'm just going to estimate the length of this tube and I will add about one inch to it. And now I will install the torch on the welder and take a final measurement and then recut this tube. Tied it all the way. I'm going to use a U-roller or U-groove roller. That's what you should use when you are welding aluminum or to drive aluminum wire. And I'm going to use 35,000 or 0 0.9 millimeter groove. And this go toward the inside. So I will have this one facing the inside. I'm going to mark this tube with the knife. I will recut it to this marking.
Okay, still touching the roller. I need to remove little more. I will remove about 330 seconds or about 2 millimeters. That's perfect. I have about the thickness of this cutting blade between the roller and this tube. Since I'm only using the small spool, this is what I'm going to try to weld with this machine. I have to remove this one right here. It's half inch socket. I tried the 13 millimeter. However, the half inch seems to be better fit for it. By the way, the 4000 series aluminum MIG wire, it's softer than the 5000 series. So if this welder MIG weld using this wire, then it should have no problem welding any type of aluminum MIG wire. They do recommend to only use 35,000 or 45,000 diameter wire for this welder or 0.9 millimeter or 1.2 millimeter wire. We also have to replace this tube over here or this spring. I have to pull it out. And I have to cut a piece of the liner to its length. Maybe a little bit longer. And set it up like this. Next we put the wire. All right, make sure the spool is free. This is a lock nut, so it will hold its place. When you make aluminum using the spool gun or the this process, you need to make sure to keep the tip away from the weld puddle by about three quarter of inch. This to allow the shielding gas to help cool the wire and the tip so you don't get a stick. Because if you're very close, the wire may melt into the tip and then you have to replace the tip and you also have to push the weld. 
I will try to weld with it, and then I will come back, show you the setting, and show you how this welder performs. Just to make this video short, so I don't keep it trying and recording and make the video unnecessary too long. This is my setting, 35,000 wire, 2T, the feed rate, 308, 16 volt, aluminum, manual MIG, and we are welding on 110. Also when weld aluminum, make sure to set your torch on electrode positive. As you see, I connected the torch to the positive side and the work to the negative side. I set the argon regulator to about 30 CFH. The scrap aluminum that I'm welding is about 8 inch thick. I am going to preheat it a little bit. Make sure you don't set too much tension on the roller. It really did a good job, even though 35,000, it's a little bit bigger for the thickness of this aluminum. So I set it on the cold side, you know, as far as voltage. However, it did good job. I hope you like this video. Thank you for watching and thank you for your support and I'll see you later. Take care.